All right, Michael here with another video. So what we're gonna be talking about today is how to get a good basic setup with your Helix right when you get it. How can you quickly add a few pedals, uh, you know, an amp and a cab to get it to sound pretty great. This uh, video is, is intended for people who play in a classic rock band when you're doing cover songs and you want to have a variety of tones. You know, um, what the, with the, the rig that you set up your Helix with, you should uh, really consider that when you're dialing in the tones now, it matches your live rig exactly to the point where if you're using a Fender Twin reverb amplifier, match all of the volume level. You know, what, what I do is I just put them at five, bass, mid, treble, I put the dials at five. Even the volume we found like our sweet spot is like five, which is pretty loud. It's a powerful amp, right? It works well with the friggin' loud drummer. And so that kind of, it's a nice volume level, right? We don't go any higher than that. Uh, and, and a quick note here, but so I don't forget, we put the, the Helix uh, volume at 12, okay, uh, 12 o'clock. We don't go past that because I, I found, I mean, I, I plugged it in and I used my phone as like a decibel meter. And it seems that when you plug the guitar directly into the amp, um, you check the volume level and then you plug the, the guitar into the Helix, the Helix into the amp right you get you turn it to 12 o'clock it's got that same volume level you turn it to three quarters it's it's too high like right so now when it's too high you're sending a stronger signal to the amp now the amp is going to behave differently the amp is very dynamic right it's not digital where it's maybe um uh it's it's modeling something it's it's a behavior that is that is um natural right uh uh analog so the point is you want to be consistent when you're dealing with more analog gear. Um, it can be maybe a little unpredictable. I don't know. Same with digital gear in its own way. So we, we, we want to start off and say, hey, we're going to create this setup so that it's just like the uh, setup when you perform live. There's no guessing. Plug and play. Here's what I've already set up. I know exactly how it's going to sound. And as a guitar player, when you create a tone that's inspiring, uh, I, at home and you figured it out and you can get that exact same tone when you're playing live you're gonna have a much better show of course right so the helix is at 12 I've got it on my screen here we're gonna go through what what my setup is but first um, let's talk briefly about what I like to do for the helix I think typically it would be great to set the helix up just as a digital pedal board right that's a great start because if you have an amp already, which you likely do, you're a guitar player and you're playing live shows, uh, and you like the sound of that amp, that's the most important thing, right? So firstly, plug your guitar straight into the amp and say, do I like the sound of that amp? Typically, right, if you're going for like classic rock sound, maybe you want uh, a Les Paul with, um, or, or, or a Epiphone, right? There's many of them sound really great plugged into a Marshall, that's like your go-to, right? And you can sort of clean up that sound by rolling off of your volume knob, which we'll talk about, and in, in how you're playing dynamically with a guitar. That's something we will talk that's really useful. But um, you kind of got the Les Paul Marshall combo, and that's a classic thing for 80s, you know, classic rock kind of stuff. Uh, I personally love the cleaner stuff with the um, Fender Strat. Check this out, this is a beautiful Fender Stratocaster. And with this one, you got the two single coils, and then what it does is it gets to the third single coil. So you got like one, two, three, four, five switches. So when it gets, so it's, so it's switch, first switch is here, second switch is these two. I, I, this is what I think, I tested this out before. Third switch is here, fourth switch is, um, I think just this one, and then fifth switch is, is the humbucker right humbucker being similar to the Les Paul and why is it important to know that because the Les Paul has the two humbuckers uh, and they're louder they're gonna be significantly louder because you have two single coils together make making more sound right uh, it's great because it's it's not as noisy 
right? These are noisier, but I personally, I love the sound of the Strat, right? Um, a Les Paul doesn't sound good by itself. We know, like, just straight into, like, like uh, uh, you know, a board. It's like, you know, any guitar. I mean, you need to have a little, little uh, EQ change to it to make it sound a little good. But I love the sound of the single coil, so that's what we're going to be working with. And so the single signal chain, like we, we were talking about, is like this. From the guitar to the Helix, using it as a digital pedal board, going to an amplifier, to our Fender Twin Reverb, where we've got everything pretty much at 5 for the, for the levels, volume, bass, mid, treble. The reverb is at like 1. Give it a little reverb, that's fine. If not, you can turn it all the way down and use the reverb in your board. Does It's up to you, right? Uh, but let's keep things simple. I got the tone knobs up to 10. Okay, this is important for consistency sake, right? Uh, the volume, I think we'll leave it at 10 right now, but eventually, usually I like to just take it off a little at 8 or something, right? Um, and let's plug this in. Another option uh, that you could do is just going the helix straight into the board. And in that case, you would do a similar setup to actually what I have here, which is to have an amp and a cab. Now with the Helix getting into the uh, on the screen here, you can go amp and cab. You can go amp, preamp, cab. So in our case, we want to we want to model use the tw Fender Twin Reverb model, right? The Fender Twin Reverb with the Fender guitar uh, is a great is you know a, a popular combination, right? Now I'm going to link in this description for the Helix all of the amps, models, and names, and what those are intended to be modeling. What actual, like, you know, Marshall has a different name in the Helix, the Twin Reverb has a different name, right? So I'll link that in there so you can see it for yourself. But again, trying to keep it simple. Now that's kind of like it's kind of I don't know how to describe it, right? It's um, check this out. You hear if if you hear it, you hear a little bit of noise. I've got the noise gate on. If I turn that off, you can hear it more, right? So noise gate takes it out a little. If you turn, you know. So um, this is selected to this pickup here. Let's go in the center. Look at that sound right away. Cool. That's a great clean sound, right? How do we get that sound? So looking at our signal path, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine pedals that come before. They're positioned before, right? We're starting here at the multi-channel, right? Where the input can be a guitar, aux, or variax. You can just have guitar. It would be the same thing. You're going guitar in on the back of the helix, right? And then it's going here and it's going to the noise gate first. And I've set the threshold, I've already listened to it a little and said, okay, when I'm not doing anything, can it basically take off all of the noise? Where are we at here? Can I put it higher? This isn't behaving like I would like it to, I don't know why. I feel like, okay, maybe it's the other way. That does nothing. I guess you gotta play with these noise gates because you know, I, I would like it to behave a little differently where eventually you don't hear it if you turn it all the way up, right? Uh, because it's just completely gated off every all the sound. Anyway, so I put that in a comfortable spot. It takes away a little bit of the sound. Compressor as well, four to one ratio. Um, you can, Keep in mind, like a lot of the presets, the presets that that the pros have put in here, I think they work pretty well. Stick to the presets for the most part, you know. Uh, as soon as you put the pedal on, it's like here's the preset that they like, and here's how it sounds good with this preset. You try it out for your rig. If it doesn't work, make some small adjustments. Getting into it after the compressor, going into a Minotaur, which is. Um, it's like, I think it's called a, I don't know if it's OCD. No, it's like a really expensive like overdrive pedal, right? But it's it's called Minotaur. So it's it's uh, mimicking this overdrive pedal. I don't, I don't remember the name. So 
Um, when you play with that drive pedal, it gets a little crunch. You hear that? It's like, it's like, if I want, I can go soft. So that's the cool thing. Here's where it comes into play with the volume knob. You know, maybe most of the show you even just leave the drive pedal on, right? So now you're going, you're going. Right? And now I roll it off. Now what the drive pedal here is doing is it's still adding some color. It's still adding, it's changing the tone a little bit of this guitar. It's not just like it's not existent, right? It does change it, but it can clean up going from having some drive. Clean up a little where, where it breaks up. It breaks up, gets how you hear a little bit of the pedal as you hit harder, make more, you know, louder noises. So that's the drive pedal. I love that. Figure out the pedal that you like and just give it a little bit of drive, right? So that it's not just completely clean. You want to have that. The next thing is the distortion. Good, it's silent right now. As soon as I turn up that volume knob, it gets loud, right? So this is again where I think that the guitar player should should try to like have more fun with the volume knob, right? As soon as the song is end. You know, roll off the volume knob and be really clean with your playing, right? So, uh, this distortion is badass, just... I think this is a pretty cool uh, distortion pedal. You get a lot of sustain out of it. Um, let me go here. That's the pedal I'm using. And those are the settings. Now it goes into a phaser. Just going into the phase. Kind of a cool effect there. Go ahead and choose whatever you want there. Here's a chorus. And like I said, the presets are pretty much like out the gate. They work. You know, um, the volume of this course works really nicely. It doesn't shoot the volume way up when I hit the button. That's not what we want. We just wanted to add a little color to the sound, maybe make it stand out in the mix of the full band a little bit. Um, keep in mind, again, using your equipment now, setting it up the exact same way that you will do uh, when you're live. Why is that? Again, like if your volume on the guitar amp is at three and then you set your, your rig up with your, your volume levels for your Helix, the drive pedal is at this volume, distortion is at this volume. Actually, what I've noticed is when you get to five, I think that the volume, the differences that you didn't hear at three are like way more pronounced. So then you hit the distortion like, whoa, wow, just wall of distortion that's so loud, right? So just keep that in mind. Um, Getting into it. I like this simple delay pedal. Um, I'm skipping the pitch. Actually, we'll go to the pitch. That's fine because it's in the same the signal chain. Pitch before. All of this again is before the amp and cab, which I'll discuss. Um, so pitch pedal. Let's put the drive on as well. So that's kind of fun. Um, and then wah pedal. So the way this that, that I set this up, you can go ahead and do the exact same thing. Going into bypass controller, you want to set this up. You want the volume, the wah pedal to be set up in a way that you have to click it. 
You have to push down on the vol on the pedal, the expression pedal, uh, and it clicks. Really put your weight into it to make sure it clicks. Uh, and then now it turns into the wah. It, it turns the wah on, bypass the sign on, okay? Pretty cool. So, uh, bypass expression pedal toe. Bypass. So that's how I've got that set up. Bypass expression toe. And I guess that seems to work. Uh, a quick note on bypass here. You see that the you once you've put your pedal uh, your your um, tones on this signal path, you need to assign them to uh, pedals on the helix. You have to t say, hey, this pedal should go for this um, this tone pedal, whatever you know. This this uh, stop uh, click, whatever. Th this button should go to this pedal. Okay, so. Let's look at how that's set up. So for example, for the drive pedal, okay, we're clicking on bypass controller assign in this Helix edit uh, again, and bypass is what we want, of course. You know, you could do gain tone level, there's different things. We're just bypass, we're just turning the pedal on and off, right? So I've chosen foot switch eight. Now go to the next pedal, foot switch nine. So choose what you want there and also rename it right there okay getting into the next thing is we also have a volume pedal I love to throw the volume pedal I like to keep it at 75 percent and so it's preset at 75 percent you put your pedals in make sure by the way when you're doing this you save it click save on the helix or click save in um, helix edit Okay, I um, believe it's right there. Okay, uh, and uh, for the volume pedal, I keep it at 75, so that gives you a little bit of room, a uh, little head room uh, when you're live and you, you want to get above your band for the solo. Just remember to go back down after the solo. Note for all those, uh, uh, you know, overly excited guitar players out there. Great. Next thing in this signal path is the amp and cab. This is um, modeling the Fender Twin Reverb amplifier. What I would suggest for this is we're doing this and we're also plugging the Helix into the Fender Twin amp. Is that technically right? Probably not. I think it sounds good. Don't get too wrapped up in the technical. To me, it sounds good. Uh, and because especially the uh, this Fender model, like it doesn't add a ton of color to the tone, so it doesn't sound super weird. Well, you'll notice if you, if you just try to add an amp, it sounds way off. You have to make sure you have the amp combined with the cab. And fortunately, what he, Line Six has done for us with the Helix is just added both the line, the uh, amp, and the cab into one combination that you can just pop in really easily. Great, right? Now, what we've also done is we've added the amp and cab combo on the second line because you have different processing computers, I believe, or chips, maybe. It's one computer with two chips, I don't know. Um, so, so you have a, like a certain bandwidth of processing that's available on each line. So the first line, you have um, all the pedals, which is we have enough processing to deal with that. And then the second line, you have your amp cab. If you put the amp cab on the top line, I don't know, like it'd probably be fine, but it's nice to just have some headroom with your bandwidth, I believe. And so then after that, you say, okay, we got this great sound coming out of the amplifier. Let's put a reverb on the end of that. Just give it a nice smoother sound with the reverb uh, and then delay that at the end. At the very end, you say, I want everything that I just created to have a delay on it. See, if you put the delay like before the amp, it's gonna sound differently. Right, and maybe you want that sound. I think it's more popular and it sounds better to do the delay after, okay? So.
So a lot of fun with this, honestly. I, I really, um, I mean, it's exciting. So hopefully you like the tone too. Again, we're just, we're not actually going into the Fender Twin right now, which I should be, right? We're just going straight from the Helix into the, um, the computer here. So thanks for watching the video. Hopefully this was helpful. Uh, oh, of course, last thing, keep in mind with the tone, consistency in the rig, right? So I would not plug a Les Paul into this setup because it's not what I created it for. And typically that Les Paul, it would be better with the Mar a Marshall, like you have that 80s classic rock sound. Um, uh, and as I mentioned, we want to be consistent. So I would create it, I've already done it. I've created a separate patch for um, Les Paul, for the, uh, you know, Les Paul like grit sound, okay? So, um, and, and by the way, we have the twin hum, the, the humbuckers here. If we plug, we could do it. Notice it's louder. It's really loud because of, because these are louder, right? And it's hit, it, it's going to behave differently. So personally, if I wanted to use these humbuckers, I could still do it, but technically you could, uh, maybe use a different patch if you're going to use the humbuckers or just not use them. So, uh, if you like this video, please comment something about, uh, you know, if, if you like this sort of how-to videos, I'm trying to figure out what kind of content to put on my channel uh, that people will enjoy the most. And um, please like, video, subscribe, all that good stuff, and we'll see you in the next one.